Ooh, um, this girl is on fire. fire! <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to the AVIT Amplifier. Each week, we'll feature voices and ideas that need to be amplified in the higher education and pro AV IT communities. This show is brought to you by higheredav.com. And now here's your host, Ryan Gray. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're back and we have a treat for you again today because returning for the second time, two weeks in a row, is uh, is Corey Schaefer. And uh uh, I will apologize from the beginning because I feel like uh, the set of questions I have here uh, may not uh, may not meet uh, your uh, intellectual stature. I'm usually uh, uh, asking these questions to people who work in higher ed, and all of us higher ed people, you know, we're a little more uh, uh, a little more uh, down. To, or no, I'm just kidding about that. But thank you for coming back, Corey, and talking with us uh, for this. Uh, I'm hoping to. Uh, uh, get to l- know you a little better with what I have termed the the most intense questionnaire in the podcast space. So I hope you're ready Ooh, for what's coming okay. your way. That's, I'm no, not I'm ready, gonna... but bring it. Okay. Um, first off, uh, what is your intro song? If you're getting introduced at a big event, a concert, you're entering the boxing ring. What is the energy you want people to have when they're about to run into Corey Schaefer? Ooh, um... This girl is on fire. fire. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously can't sing. <laughs> no, that was fantastic. I think you win his first guest to actually sing something on the podcast. That was amazing. <laughs> So one, that is a great song. And I actually had, a I won't go into the story, but a new executive director of an association and she was being announced at the actual thing and, and came up from the back of the room with that song blaring from the back. It was fantastic. So I fully endorse. Okay. I obviously, we won't be able to clear. I hope you didn't sing enough that I have to clear that because I can never afford it, but you know, well, they'll, they won't recognize it for sure. Yeah, (laughs) that was awesome. (laughs) Thank you. Okay. (laughs) All right. So, uh, question are you would you say you are an extrovert or an introvert a a bit of both i would say that the professional side of me people view me as a extrovert and i definitely do love people and um you know getting energy off people and so on however um i also really love being alone and that's how i recharge i would say is just being alone out of nature on a horse, something like just really focused on, um, I, I'm completely comfortable in being alone. And, um, so I would say a little bit of both, but I, I'm very, very outgoing. I'm not shy, you know, et cetera. And so people would say I'm an extrovert, but I would say I, I really recharge by being alone. Alone. So, uh, so then, uh, as an infocom veteran, uh, infocom being a very extroverted activity that people struggle with, how did you co- could you do seventy two hours extroverted and just push through it, or did you have to build in introverted time to survive those types of experiences? I don't know how I survived, but no, I was extroverted the whole time, okay. and I would be, you know, I'd have a seven a.m. meeting, and I would be out till two a.m., and I would do it day after day. And then when Infocom started adding in that five k, <laughs> which would be on the last day, I, right. I, I would also do that. You oh know, my gosh. I mean, and then um, on the way home, I would pass out on the airplane. Yeah, and then I would just need. You know, in the early days, I would need the weekend. In the later years, I would need nearly a week, you yeah, know, to, to, to recover recharge. afterwards. And after, the, the older I get, the harder it is to do that anymore. I could I could do that 15 years ago. I can't do it anymore. It's brutal. I know. I know. When I started in the industry, we're more in broadcast. And the uh, NAB was our large yeah. show, the National Association of Broadcasters. And that show, when I started, was a seven-day show. Oh, my it gosh. Was, and I would do it in heels and, ugh. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> That seems impossible to pull off. Yeah. Oh yeah. my gosh. Okay. So if you couldn't have worked, let's let's step into an alternate level of the multiverse and your career yeah. didn't land in technology in any way. What is a career you think you could have done or been successful in outside of the technology realm? Well, I don't know if I would have been successful, um, but I feel like I would have loved to be a... Um, inspirational speaker, yeah. somebody that, that you you hire to do events, 
you know, uh, because I'm very attracted to that. So, you know, the Tony Robbins, the, you know, just, I love what I get out of events like that. And Mm -hmm. I I would love to be that person to give that to people. Okay. So what then, what it beyond the feeling and the charisma that obviously it goes involved in that, what, what would you want people to know? What would you be there to deliver for, to people you were speaking to? I would, I guess I would, um, I would want to deliver that they have it in them to do anything. Just decide, Mm -hmm. just decide and do it. And, you know, just look within and then just decide. So once again, I feel like we just heard the title of your book that will launch your speaking career, which is just decide and do it. I don't know. I don't know, Corey. I, I think I don't know. Uh, you're giving away your trade secrets on accident here. I don't know. That would be fantastic. I I will if if you do that, you'll I won't be able to afford you, but I will book you into Yavapai College first thing because that would oh, be amazing. Awesome. Okay, cool. So you got cool one. If you it. need if you need a test audience or something like that, come. You know, I'm saying, well, you could come our way. Okay, okay. so. Um, this is not on my list of questions, but I want, this is something that I, that, um, that I, I want to know because, uh, uh, women in the AV industry and tech industry as a whole, you know, we know may, may has gotten as high as let's say 14% in COVID it shrank and the number is somewhere around nine or 10%. And so I'm going to ask you a question that I know is a huge question and the answer isn't easy or clean, but, Um, there is, uh, what I'm encouraged about is all the conversations and the people that are actively trying to work and change that. What do you see as either a, the key things to do or B, um, as you think about what you would like to do to influence that, to make it look more like the population in general, what are we getting right? And what maybe are we getting wrong about really trying to make that change? No pressure on that question. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Um, hmm. What we're getting right is we're having the conversation. We are seeing a shift. Uh, I, I would say for the last five years of my career, many people would call me and say, hey, Corey, we've got this job opening. We really mm-hmm. want it to be. We really love a woman to fill the role, but we obviously can't put it out there like that. Right. Because that right. would be discrimination, you mm-hmm. know, as well. You know, um, can you help us? You know, what can we do? So I, I think that what we're getting right is. Um, the conversation. Yeah. And I also feel that what we're getting right is this uh, many groups popping up, you know, that are really focused in this area, you know, Girls at Code, mm-hmm. uh, Women in ABIT, the Affix to Women's Council. You know, so we're getting more of this. Um, and I, from it, we have to see some change. Yeah. Um, you know, what's going to do it and what are we getting wrong? I have to tell you, I ponder it all the time because, you know, I spent, you know, well over 30 years in the industry. And this was a, this was a conversation when I first entered the industry. And I had hoped that when I exited, it wouldn't be this yeah. conversation because I'd like it to not even be a conversation. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, and so I'm not sure what it's going to take to change it, you know, um, but I'm just going to give it my all you know, as long as I can to, to try to influence and get it uh, to change. And, you know, it's definitely first starts with awareness and then comes the conversation, uh, you know, et cetera. And from all of this, we will get it right. It's going to come in, but, but for me, um, I can't really put my finger on it, uh, you know, yet, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a real problem that, that must change. Yeah. And I think if there was one thing to put our finger on, we would have done it by now. You know, we would have right. done the thing. It's it's lots of these things. But I I really, I think your perspective now would be so well connected, but kind of being out of it, you know, you might, uh, I'm no pressure, but I'm, I'm looking forward to your voice in helping us continue to do that for, for on all the levels that were people in all different areas trying to make a change in the circle that they can make a change in. And I'm going to add this comment in as well. I feel like women, we have to also get out of our own way because uh, this uh, this just happened yesterday. Mm-hmm. Uh, a male in the industry contacted me about a job that was open, and he said, "Hey, I'd love for you to use your connection to help us get uh, get some applicants." He yeah. wasn't specifically looking for a woman; he's just looking for applicants. 
So I want it to be a woman. So I'm like, I want to front load this with a bunch of women applying. Mm -hmm. So I reach out to my contacts and, and one of these young gals looking through it and she's like, I don't hit every requirement. Yeah. And this is the, I understand not everybody's going to meet every requirement. Just jump in and decide to do it. If this is something you want, go for it. Yeah. You know, but she's, she's, you know, gotten in her own way to even apply. It's like, let's apply first. Right. And, and then, yeah. you know, let's go through this, you know, so we, so we have to have enough confidence or, or instill enough confidence in women in the industry and help them get out of their own way and first applying. Because there are many studies that show that women constantly look through the list. And if they don't qualify, you know, they don't feel they meet one of the qualifications, they may not apply. Men, right. men apply regardless. It's, Every time. There's nothing like the confidence of an average middle-aged white man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we, we uh, especially if we have beards, we are very, yeah, we, 40%, I can fake another 40%. Oh, okay, I'm good. Let's go from there. Yeah, 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 exactly. Okay. All right. So, all right, switching gears. Ready? Aretha yep. Franklin, Whitney Houston, Mariah Carey, Adele, or Beyonce? Uh, I'll say Adele. Okay. Why? And I'm going to say Adele because this is weird, but there are two men that I just adore in my life. Uh, well, one passed away a few years ago, John Green. He was mm -hmm. in the industry yeah. and he loved Adele. So he would go to her concerts and I just, I was just delighted that he was open with the fact that, mm -hmm. hey, I'm going to an Adele concert, you know, not embarrassed by it at all, letting everybody know that he loved Adele. And then the second guy uh, is my 80 year old uncle who came to live with me a year ago for a short period of time. And he had lost his wife. So he was uh, staying with us. And he one day says to me, Corey, have you heard of this singer called Adele? Uh -huh. I'm like, yeah. Um, and he was just so taken with her. You know, she has that tattoo of Saturn on her mm -hmm. uh, inner forearm. My 80 year old uncle who didn't have a tat went and got that tattoo. Oh my gosh. He was so taken with her. So talk about I mean, what, a, what an artist that can make that kind of connection. That's amazing. With an 80-year-old man. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So then, so you, obviously you choose Adele because of these connections to other people in your life. Do you have an Adele song or uh, something in well, there that kind of talks guess, to you? You know, hello. I don't, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. No, I would say not necessarily, but, um, but I mean, I think she's, I think she's, a beautiful talent, you know, um, saw her concert, you know, at the Griffith Observatory. It was, wow. you know, amazing, you know, um, yeah. That's, yeah, of someone that, like, you can't look away from. You can't not, yeah. look, like, when, yeah, has that thing that just captures your attention no matter what is going on. She could be singing yeah. in the supermarket and everybody would just stop and turn around. Okay. Yeah. Uh, do you think people are generally good with a proclivity for evil or generally evil with a proclivity for good? Oh, for sure. Most people are good. And, um, you know, if they're evil, it's just that we just don't know their story. We just mm. don't really know what's going on there, you know. Um, but I found most people are good. And I would say specifically in the AV industry. Right. I mean, this industry is just so full of good, kind, generous people. People. And I've experienced that my whole career. That's awesome. So then if you, I love the ex explanation. If somebody seems evil, we just don't know their story. What have, when you've run across that, how, what do you do to either try and learn their story or under, or try and understand how to deal with somebody that may be, you know, that may not be w w landing on that side of good that, uh, that you're looking at? I would say that it's not easy, right? Mm -hmm. So when somebody's evil, our first reaction is to mirror that, right? And, mm -hmm. you know, be be upset and bothered with it. And I just think that I just have to remind myself that uh, I, I don't know their story. So you may be cut off in traffic and you, you know, a little bit of road rage, you know, kicks in. And then you just say, you know, well, you know, maybe they're headed to the hospital or, you know, you just, then I start thinking of a story about them, you know, like sometimes, you know, yeah. You know, it's kind of a fun game to play, you know, with yourself that, um, hmm, that was an odd reaction by them and I'm kind of taken back. So then I start to make up my own story, giving, working to give them the benefit of the doubt or That's trying awesome. to. Yeah. You know, what would it take me to get to the place of that there? And could that be what's going on with that person? Right. Right. That's that's yeah. That, talk, talk about a, a, a truly empathetic, you know, way of expressing 
expressing empathy to someone, even if you're not doing, which is I'm literally going to try and put myself in your shoes and figure out how you could get to the place that you would act or make the decision that I see you make. Yeah, I would try, but I'm also human. So I'm, oh, I'm yeah. not always that, per- I'm not always that person, but, but I, I try to be. Cool. Okay. So uh, you did sing already. You did this thing. And anybody you think you either sound like or you could do an impression of, uh, either uh, a celebrity, someone in the industry, I don't know, anybody out there? No, I can't do an impression of, but uh, someone that I often pull out their humor or their one liners mm-hmm. is a comedian. He may not be well known, but it's a comedian named Brian Regan. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I love him because he's a clean comedian. Mm-hmm. And so uh, when uh, we were raising our kids and we would do these long road trips for whatever, you know, some sport event, we would always listen to Brian Regan. And uh, to this day, he just cracks me up. Now, I have a six-year-old grandson, and he now also loves Brian Regan. So I'm just trying to make sure that every generation is a Brian Regan fan. <laughs> and, you know, his, his lines, you know, uh, take luck, you know, um, which is when you, you know, or... One of my favorites is when the, he gets a taxi to the airport and he unloads and he's going uh, into the airport and the cab driver says, have a good flight. And he looks back, goes, you too. You too. And then he realizes, <laughs> you know, or a, a server puts down your meal at the restaurant and says, you know, enjoy yeah. your meal. You too. too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, oh, you never get to eat, you know. You can't take it back once it's been said. You can't get it back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we talked a little before about the, how you you first got into the AV industry. Was that your first job, or were there uh, other jobs that came before the company that became Clear One? So the, um, when I got into the industry, I say that's the start of my career, and before yeah. that, there were many jobs. Mm-hmm. You know, I would say my first job was I grew up on a ranch in Montana, and um, when I was young, my father um, gave me the job of trapping gophers. Wow. Because gophers will ruin your alfalfa crop, right? So, um, but he was hard. He told me, you know, I had to buy my own traps. Um, he would pay me 25 cents per catch. This was a family cattle ranch. So my uncle owned half the ranch as well. So my uncle paid me 50 cents. My dad paid me 25 cents. So Ooh. I would get 75 cents. So it was great though, because um, I thought my dad was, you know, why would my dad pay me more than my uncle? However, um, what I learned from that was the more traps I bought, the more money I made, but it was an investment. So it'd kind of be, you got to be in it for the long game, you know? Mm-hmm. So um, that was really my first job on the ranch. And then my first job off the ranch where I actually started to get paid, you know, more than what my dad and uncle would pay <laughs> me. I did these summer programs. I worked for the forest service. And so um, I was able to, you know, uh, dig out trails and dig fire line stuff. You, we weren't put on a fire or anything, but for fire season, you could dig out fire line and, mm-hmm. you know, prep for all of that. And it was wonderful to be out, you know, in the wilderness every day. And it was great. My dad called me a parasite when I got home because I was, quote, living off the government, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So what you, you talked a little about, uh, at, okay. So trapping gophers was a little bit of a volume business. So yeah. did you get any, le- any other lessons from gopher trapping or from digging fire lines that carried over into your AV career? So the, actually, um, oddly the trapping gophers, yes, because, uh, what are you going to invest your, you know, you're, you're getting this money, 75 cents per trap. Mm -hmm. There were, of course, so many gophers. It was just yours to go out and get. But if you only had five traps, that's all you're going to get. So how do you grow your business Mm -hmm. while still getting that instant gratification of cash, you know, et cetera? And I I think that it's really served me well, right? Because it's about what are you going to invest in to reap greater benefits later. I love what a great, I love that as a lesson for kind of a first job is a real kind of, uh, 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 like that's a business school education one on one that is. you're getting on the thing. That's great. Montana MBA, baby. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And so, <laughs> if somebody needed help trapping gophers, could they contact TLC LLC for some consulting? <laughs> is, are your contracts available? Or uh, you know, contact me. We could we could talk about it, but it's mm-hmm. going to be more than seventy five cents. <laughs> cents a trap. Yeah. Well, you know, the the market has moved on gophers since then. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes. Right. yes. That's fantastic. Okay. Um. 
people, uh, there's a lot of talk these days, and, and I think it's great about self-care and how, how people, uh, but sometimes basically people talk about, oh, you know, remember to take time for your, yourself, to take care of yourself. And most people think that means, I mean, what's the stereotype uh, 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 for guys? It's go play golf or, you know, for it's go get a massage or those sorts of things. What does self-care mean to you? How do you exercise self-care? Boy, I, I think you use the word. It's exercise, right? So mm. um, in this year of retirement, I've been able to try all kinds of things. And I went on a yoga retreat, which okay. I had never really done yoga because I'm a little type A and that just seems too mellow for me. And it was such an amazing experience to focus on breathing, the mind, the body, just kind of that whole thing. And uh, so I hope to carry that forward, you know, uh, moving on. But I think that being active and uh, making sure that self care is actually on your list every single day, yeah. right? Because if you if you don't take care of yourself, you certainly can't take care of others. And I think women carry this burden more than men, you mm -hmm. know, um, just because of you know, fam, you know, we pick up many of the family, you know, yeah. chores, etc., the kid, the child care, and all of that. So. And that you can't you can't rest until it's a hundred percent done, and therefore you'll get to a hundred percent capacity before you ever take the time to yeah yeah yeah. And by doing that, you're able to be more thoughtful about all those other things that you're going to be you're doing, doing throughout the day, right? Cool. Well, I know obviously family is very important to you, and is uh, and has done a lot. So, what's a family tradition that's really meaningful to you? Oh. Um, Let's see. I One thing I started when our kids were young is when we would do a road trip or a vacation, we had a family journal and everyone mm -hmm. had to write in the journal. And now that our kids have kids, I've given them a family journal. And so they're carrying that tradition on. But what is so fun for me is to go back and read our family journal. I just yeah. get such a kick out of it. Yeah. And often I'll take a little snapshot, you know, and send it to the kids because it's just hysterical, you know, about the things that they they wrote or things that we did or how we remembered the day, you mm -hmm. know? Um, so family journaling. That's awesome. I lo and you, you mentioned that before too, about some of your, your uh, TLC uh, board meetings of uh, being able to look back by recording things in writing. It gives you the, be able to look back and go, remember when that was so important to us and how we've come through it. And remember that's, uh, that's a fantastic one. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Everyone gets the th same three last questions. Okay. What is a question that you wish people would ask, but they don't ever ask? Hmm. Or my question's just so good. You could never think of another question that you'd need to be asked other than I'm just. So I guess, um, you know, people are asking now what I, what I, uh, what I, want them to ask, which is about family. You just did, you know, uh, because yeah. that is a, a real focus of mine. And it's nice to, you know, it's very important to me. So I love talking about my family. Um, but people are asking that. I think during my career, uh, I, I guess I wish people would ask more uh, about more input for, on things like product design and, you know, presentation, because I just think we have different opinions about things. Like mm -hmm. I remember our company developing a product and we're so focused on what the product does, uh, but yet we don't think about all the fit and finish. So like uh, we've shipped a transmitter that had an inline power supply, mm -hmm. but yet this is going to go into a rack with a variety of transmitters. And you've got all these big inline power supplies, like, you know, and once I saw that and how it was actually being installed, I went, this is, we need to change the power supply. Right. right. So things like that. And I think that, I think, uh, we, we all think differently. So if we asked more people their input on things like that, and we weren't so focused on what the widget does, but how the widget's going to be used, yeah. why it's going to be used, and then input on that, I yeah. think we would get much better output. I love that. It, we put the make sure the why is an important question and see the product in context, not just you yeah, know, not just on the shelf. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes we just can't see the forest for the trees, right? Because we're so focused on that. Okay. Well, then following up on the other, we've been talking for an hour and we haven't talked about your grandkids, which I think is something that's going. Any <laughs> any news to share on on uh, on the on on what it's like to now be a uh, a, a a grandparent? 
it is, uh, this is the best phase in life for sure. People tell you that. And I, my, I was so sick of my friends talking about it yeah. because I wasn't one. And, uh, now it's great to be in that circle. And, um, I now have six, I had wow. two editions in March. Um, so I now have six. Mm-hmm. It's um, with all the travel I'm doing, it's a, a kind of hard to to juggle all of this too. But uh, over the weekend, I just spent um, the weekend with my three granddaughters and I'm doing things that I just, I get to be a kid again too. Yeah. Uh, you know, so I went in the city pool in this horrible town. I think the whole city was in this <laughs> pool. You could see yeah. the urine in the pool, but yet I'm like, I'm getting in, you know, I'm just getting in anyway, <laughs> yeah. um, because that's what they want, mm-hmm. you know, and um, completely grossed out by it, but, you know, did it, just didn't, just didn't think about it. You know, it was super hot. This is what we're going to do to uh, yesterday. I took my grandson to this place called Meow Wolf mm-hmm. and uh, it's, and Going through these, t- I, w- I wore a sundress, which big mistake because we're going through tunnels and down slides, you know, and this and that. But I just did it anyway. I mean, yeah. it is just such a great time in life, and it isn't just the grandkids. What's cool is you get to see your children yeah. be parents, right? Be- and they have more understanding towards you as a parent, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. So it's just kind of all connecting all of those dots, and it's just an absolute. It's just the best. Yeah. My grandson's coming over today to swim. It's going to be great in a that's... pool that's not like the city pool. <laughs> yeah, good. All right. Because <laughs> health is important also. But yeah, that's yes. awesome. That's fantastic. I love that. And yeah, I as I, I, my, I have one daughter just getting ready to go to college. She's 18. And yeah, I, the whole thing is, man, the, the, the longer I was a parent, the smarter my dad, my mom and dad became. And, and yes. that's a yeah. maxim for a reason, right? It's a hundred percent true. So, yeah. um, if, so if people, you talked a little bit about wave it, if people wanted to hear about wave it, get in contact, understand what they're doing or get connected with you and follow up on when your, um, when your speaking tour begins, how would they go about <laughs> finding, uh, either a wave it that you're involved in or, or keeping an eye on, on what your fourth act is going to be. So wave it, uh, can be found on all the socials, uh, but also the website is women in And you can find me on uh, probably best place would be LinkedIn. And, uh, cause I, I, I do get alerts when there's something on LinkedIn. Cool. I would encourage everybody to do both of those. Become a member of Wave It. And yes. Men, become members of Wave It. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's yes. been really rewarding to be involved in so far. Yeah. Yes. And, and consider sponsoring Wave It. Absolutely. So there's, there's lots of ways to uh, get involved as a sponsor and as a member. Yeah. Wave It, and and this will be out timely. You know, they're, they're just kind of doing a, a second expansion launch of some of the new things. So the, the job where you talked about people wanting candidates, the job board is getting up and going and, and things like that, where they're really trying to make these connections. So now is a great time to jump in and make waves. Agreed to make yeah. waves. Uh, I love that, Ryan. And I would say that what Hetma has done has been really impressive. And I hope we can be, a, you know, we can follow Continue. Uh, in the waves that, that Hetma has made, because it's been really great to see to see what Hetma has done, you know, in support, all the scholarships and just the awareness, right? And being a focused group that yeah. that people can reach. Well, I, I I was going to you just led into it because on the it was to say I just to say thank you you know so uh, it the Hetma Prism Scholarship uh, we have ten scholarships a year we're hoping there'll be more of those in the future but two of them have been named for people in the industry and the first one that was named is the Corey Schaefer Scholarship and I was just thrilled that this year's Corey Schaefer Prism Scholar is a young woman named Kat Anabali from Yavapai College right here where I work and so this work world and where, you know, somebody that works in our performing arts center is connected with someone who's had the career that you have had and to be able to have, you know, the, the saying I hear is like, it's hard, it's hard to be it if you can't see it. And to, for right. me to know Kat now can see, you know, an example of what, uh, what a, 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 a woman leader in AV can be is fantastic. So thank you for doing that. And thank you for, uh, partnering with us to, to, to make the Prism Scholarship a thing. It is, first of all, it's when Joe Way told me he was going to do that, it just, you know, blew my socks off. And, and I'm just so appreciative. And, you know, because you just don't want to be forgotten. And so it's kind of nice, <laughs> you know, to, to have your name on a scholarship. So it, it's, it's really, it's really nice. And she is, 
she's amazing and definitely going to go places. And I also love that she's audio focused, yeah. you know, or has been audio focused and she's, she will become more rounded as well, but she's, um, because there are not a lot of women that start out that way. Exactly. Is she technical? She, she's going to bring audio knowledge and to circle around anybody she runs into. And yeah, I, I, I really look forward to what her career becomes and what all she chooses to do, not just what Agreed. she thinks she has to do, but what she's going to get to choose to do is amazing. Agreed. Cool. Okay. Final last question. Um, uh, the, the best two examples of this I can come up with, you know, in the old newscasters used to have a sign off phrase, you know, good night and good luck was a famous one or people who hosted a uh, weekend update on, on Saturday night live would have their, you know, they always, they signed off their newscast with their signature thing. So what it would be your, uh, Corey Schaefer's drop the mic sign off phrase. Um, well, I usually put this in email, um, and uh, it's it's uh, one. Uh, this is Corey Schaefer. Stay awesome. Thank you for listening to the AVIT Amplifier. Join us again for next week's episode when we'll welcome a new guest who you'll want to hear from. We promise. Your host has been Ryan Gray. He's on the tweeters at Ryan underscore A underscore Gray, or find him on LinkedIn to connect. Please subscribe and give the show a rating and review wherever you get your podcasts. This show is brought to you by higheredav.com. The views expressed here are not necessarily those of our respective institutions, employers, or sponsors. Everyone hang in there, go easy, and we'll be back next week.